I know, this truck looks like it's ready for anything, and it is. But is it ready for an enormous expanse of purple carpet? Boom! Imagine this, truck comes in from over here and hits the purple carpet. Now let's assume that the purple carpet is really nasty and sticky and it's got all kind of like carpet gunk on it and you don't even know where this carpet has been. But it's going to slow down the car. So let's do the simplest case first. The car comes in here and it's like, and it reaches the purple carpet and it's like, oh I can't go as quickly now so it slows down. In fact, it slows down and it drives more slowly when it's on the carpet. And then if it leaves the carpet, it can speed up again. But think about this. Think about if it were like a springy car or like one car connected to another car. As soon as it hits there, this one wants to slow down. These wheels want to slow down, but these wheels want to keep going. So it would shrink up a little bit. And be shrinking here. And then as soon as it got off, see, imagine this. Imagine it gets to the other end of the carpet. As soon as it gets to this end of the carpet, these wheels get more traction. They go, and they're ready to go. And these guys are still slogged back behind. So that stretches the car out. And then eventually it gets back to here, and it's in the same shape as it was before. All right, but that's easy. What if I came in at an angle into this sticky, nasty carpet? Or what if I were running across a beach and I hit suddenly water? I'd have to slow down going through the water. I don't run as fast through water. I don't know if you do, but I definitely don't. So this truck's going like this and it's like, boom! This wheel slows down. And this wheel gets to go at the same speed. So that the car turns a little bit, but really only in front. I don't have a bendy car to show you that, but I want you to think about this. This wheel hits, boom, slows down. This wheel is going at the same speed. So the front of the car turns. And when this one hits, boom, it turns this way. So the whole car, when it hits, is going to go and go this direction. So there's a braking. It's a braking of the car. I mean, I don't mean brake in the B-R-A-K-E sense. I mean B-R-A-A-K sense. It's going to turn sharply right there. Sharply right there towards towards what I would call the normal. So I'll put this as the normal direction right here. And I'm saying that the car hits right here and turns towards the normal. So the angle, oh, can I get you a little picture right here? Here's my point. My point is that this is my nasty purple carpet interface right here, and I draw a normal line away from it right there, and there's a normal line away from it right there, and I'm coming in like this, the car's all like, it goes that direction, and then it turns towards the normal. This is what I'll call the theta incident, and the theta out, well that's gonna be, what, theta, let's just call it theta two, because we don't have to, want, want to have to worry about that too much. But if it is going into a, uh, well, let's say this is a fast surface. And if it's going into a slow surface, then it will have to bend towards the normal. I suppose the exact opposite is also true. What if I just erase this thing here and I say, I'm coming that direction. I'm coming off of a slow surface. Consider that. If I'm coming off of a slow surface, let me put this back on here, see if we can make some sense of it. If I'm coming back off of a slow surface like this, then boom, this wheel gets super traction and is able to pull, which shifts the car that direction. Watch it. Do you see that? And then this wheel gets traction and then this wheel gets traction. So it goes and it continues the shift and the car is able to go at a different angle. Dependent on the speed of the car through the medium guess what? Light is also going through a medium. So that is interesting. Before we go into this though, I want to consider a marching band. Here is a nasty thick swampland over here. And here's the road. This is a marching band in Louisiana. Hello people from Louisiana. Props for watching. Now consider this. Consider the marching band is like a whole bunch of people lined up like this, and in front of them is a whole bunch of people lined up like this, and in front of them is a whole bunch of people lined up like this, and in front of them is a whole bunch of people lined up like this. But what if there was a line of people just in front of them? They'd be like, okay, these guys are still on the road and they're still fine, but this guy is in the swamp. He can't go as fast, so he's like right there. He hasn't gone very far. Similarly, these guys up here are like this, and that should be a straight line. Look at this, we got a straight line. I'm gonna connect these marching people. Here's the wave front. Oh, can I make a connection to light already? There's the wave front. Here's the wave front. There's another wave front. But these guys who are in here have had to slow down and the ones who got in first are slowed down the most. So these guys are like this. And then these guys are like this. This next row is all like this maybe. Uh-huh. And then these guys are like this. 
Notice though that these new blue lines, these new blue lines are not parallel to the old blue lines. In fact, if I draw, see these are wave fronts. And if I draw lines that are normal to them, this will be the ray of marchers, or if it's light, it will be the ray of light, and I could define a direction away from the normal. I could define this here as the incoming theta. We'll just call it theta one for kicks. And then I could define another ray. That's the outgoing ray of marchers. And notice that the outgoing ray of marchers is closer to the normal to the surface, which is again right there. Theta two is smaller than theta one because we've gone from a road to a swamp. We've gone from a place where the wave can travel quickly to a place where the wave has to slow down a lot. And in the next video, I will make a little bit of mathematical sense of this, but I have have to help you see that it happens. And this is, this is really complicated. I never really understood why that was happening. So consider this. This is my swamp. And I'm going to make a wave come in here, and it's going to turn. Believe it or not, this is about to be awesome. Wave comes in like this, and you see it? It's like, do you see it when it reaches there? It's turning. That's not a parallel continuation. You see that line right there? Right there is not the same as that line. And if I make it more dramatic, here I've got a ray coming in here, it's like this, like, look at that. See that wave? Now don't get distracted by this refraction over here, the reflection over here. We're studying an effect now called refraction. The ray of light comes in here, and it goes through the mirror like that, and then it exits the mirror over there. So I've got this really beautiful pattern. Let me put some dots here, and I can kind of show you what I think is happening. I think I've got a dot here, and a dot here, and a dot here, and a dot here. So I think that light is coming in like this, and it's going through the mirror like that, and then it's going out like this. Is that about what you see? Let's see if I can duplicate that again with the laser. I just want to make sure that we know what we're talking about. I think that that's what the light is doing. Can you confirm that? Yep, definitely doing that. Now the cool thing is, the incoming light is parallel to ultimately the outgoing light right here. You see those guys are parallel. So it's just as if it was shifted, but when it was in there, it was actually going a different direction. That's because of the slowing down of the wave fronts there. I hope all of that makes sense. Let's make some mathematical sense of it pretty soon. No, you wanna see it in red? Let's do it in red. <laughs> all right, let's see what happens. We go in that same path and it's like and it bends, whoa. Red comes out at a different place. Is that okay with you? Anybody surprised? Maybe you shouldn't be too surprised because this is some really interesting physics. It seems like it may be, may be frequency dependent. We'll see what we can do. You should get your hand, don't, look, don't trust somebody's stupid online video for this. Go get your hands on some lasers and some blocks of glass or acrylic or something and do some experiments because this is some really awesome hands-on stuff. Bye-bye.